Brandon here with IFAST University. Uh, this video, we're gonna go over a really, really basic understanding of energy systems and bioenergetics, uh, which is basically this idea of how does your body make energy that is useful for you when you're exercising or playing a game or performing. In this video, we're gonna do a lot of talking about theory and just some basic science of these energy systems that we're gonna get into. Uh, and the idea here is that we're gonna go through the science now so that later on in videos that you may see on here or on the membership website, uh, that we can go a little bit deeper in how to actually apply this to training or working with a team. All right, so first of all, what is bioenergetics? This big fancy word, right? And all that means is how does a, biologically, how does an organism, especially in a human in our case, make or break chemical bonds in its body? Or how, does its, how do the cells make and break chemical bonds in, in your body to give you usable energy, right? We're talking about usable energy. We're talking about ATP or adenosine triphosphate. Okay, and we're gonna make this really, really simple to start. So all this adenosine triphosphate is, is I have one adenosine molecule, and attached to it, again, triphosphate, I have three phosphate molecules, okay? And if we have an adenosine triphosphate or an ATP, if we break off one of these phosphates here, so now we only have two phosphates, so we have a molecule called ADP, or adenosine diphosphate. Anytime you break off one of these phosphate molecules, you get a release of energy that the cell can use. In our case, we're worried about muscle contractions. Um, so anytime a muscle wants to contract, I have to make ATP or produce ATP somehow, and I'm able to break it apart. The muscle is able to use this energy that was released to cause a contraction. The next part of this is just kind of give you an introduction to these three different energy systems that have the ability to form ATP in muscle, okay? So our first one is the ATP PCR system, right? We have our adenosine triphosphate and then a phosphocreatine or a creatine molecule, okay? And we're gonna label each of these, whether they use oxygen or not, how many steps there are in the process to get ATP, the power, and then their capacity to produce energy, okay? So our ATP PCR system is considered anaerobic, so it does not use oxygen. We're gonna big fat no here, okay? The number of steps, it's literally one step. This phosphocreatine or creatine phosphate gives away its phosphate molecule to an ADP, and we get another ATP right away. Okay, so it's one step, it's quick, fast, done in a hurry. All right, power. We're talking about power, we're talking about how much ATP can this each system give us, how quickly, okay? So our power for our ATP PC system, since it's one step, has a very high power. Right, one and done there. And then our capacity, we kind of get this trade-off between power and capacity. So anytime we see a high power, we're gonna have a low capacity. The next system we're worried about is the anaerobic glycolytic system. There's a few little nuances that we won't really get into or worry about in this video. Um, just wanna give you a big generalized overview so that we can start to apply this in the subsequent videos that you'll see. Right, so anaerobic glycolytic system, as the name would imply, anaerobic, does not use oxygen. So again, no oxygen here. No oxygen is needed to give us some ATP. Number of steps, uh, there's about 10 steps, depending on what you start with. So if we compare that to our ATP PCR system, we have more steps, right? So it's gonna take us longer to get ATP from it. So instead of having a really high power like the ATP PC system, our power is gonna be moderate here. And again, we see this uh, power versus capacity trade-off. So once we have a moderate power from this anaerobic glycolytic system, we're also gonna see a moderate capacity. Right, where if we have this system chugging along at its maximal power, it's gonna last us for somewhere, depending on the person, uh, around 45 seconds, maybe up to a minute and a half. All right, the last system on our board here is the aerobic system. Again, as the name kind of implies, aerobic, oxidative, I need oxygen. So we finally have one in here that needs oxygen to pump out ATP for us. Uh, the number of steps, I don't even wanna to try to count through them, we're just gonna say there's a lot at this point. All right, there's a bunch of steps compared to our other two, which means that it's gonna take longer for us to get ATP from it, okay? Uh, the power here, it's fairly slow because there's so many steps to get us ATP, so the power's fairly low in our aerobic system compared to the other two. And then lastly, capacity, we talked about having a capacity versus power trade-off. Again, we see that here where we have a pretty low power, but this capacity is 
just about infinite. This is the, the system that pumps out ATP for basically all of your tissues in your body that keeps you alive. So this system's going all the time till you're, you're done. Now we're gonna go through something called the bath model that I think is a really good visualization, uh, kind of an analogy that shows us how all these energy systems work together um, and helps us visualize the power and capacity of each of these systems, okay? So let's just start at the bottom here and we'll walk through it. So right down here in each cell, we're worried about getting ATP that's usable for the cell, okay? So we have this little bitty ATP gas tank that we're trying to keep full so that the cell can have energy to keep doing whatever it's doing. In our case, having enough energy so that the muscle can keep contracting so the fatigue doesn't set in, right? So anytime we go to do something, trying to get ATP to the cell, and depending on how fast somebody's moving in our case, if I'm moving really, really intensely, really, really quickly, I may turn open this valve, so to speak, and get as much ATP flowing as possible, as quickly as possible, so that they can keep sprinting at a high speed. So we have a little bit of ATP already present, right? And we talked about opening up this valve, so to speak, so they keep going. But we gotta talk about how do we keep this ATP gas tank full, right? And this is where our three big energy systems come into play, right? So we have our ATP PCR gas tank, our anaerobic glycolytic gas tank, and our aerobic, aerobic gas tank, uh, that's probably a little underrepresented here. We said it, it's the one that keeps you alive, so this should probably be as big as this room instead of just how it's shown on the whiteboard, okay? All right, if we take a look at each of the tanks and the pipe coming out of each of these tanks that gives us our ATP, tells us a lot about the interaction and how these energy systems work. Okay, so our ATP PC system, we said it has one step. It's a very short, very powerful system, right? So we have a short pipe that's really big around. So if we turn open this valve, ATP and energy is gonna come rushing out of there to get to our gas tank where we can use it, right? Versus our anaerobic glycolytic system, a little bit smaller diameter of a pipe, but a little bit longer of a process to get it there, right? So again, we see this moderate capacity and a moderate power, i.e. the size of the pipe, to get us some ATP that's usable. And lastly, our aerobic system, right? If you look at the size of the pipe, it's really, really small around compared to the other two, which means we don't have a ton of power here, so it's not giving us ATP very quickly relative to the other two. And the pipe is really, really, really long because there's so many steps in this process before we can get ATP that's usable. And the last point that I wanna make here is that it's never just turn one valve on, turn the other ones off, turn one valve on, turn the other ones off. It's an intermingling of all three of these energy systems all at once no matter what you're doing, right? What's gonna dictate which one is predominating or which one has its valve wide open compared to the other two is the intensity of whatever somebody's doing and the duration of it. Okay, so the intensity and duration. If we're talking about something that's really, really intense, we're gonna need ATP as quickly as possible, so you're probably gonna throw open both of these valves, so to speak, um, to get as much ATP as quickly as you can, but the aerobic system's still gonna try to contribute as much as it possibly can, okay? Um, versus duration, if I have something that lasts really long that isn't super intense, these two are still gonna contribute energy, but we're gonna to try to rely on the aerobic system as much as possible, right? Your body always wants to default to this aerobic system because its capacity for energy is so big and we know that we can rely on it if it's fast enough. So the aerobic system also has one more job that we haven't talked about yet, right? So the first job we talked about is it is the energy system that's supplying energy all day and night that you're trying to rely on to keep you alive. But it also has another important job here and that is to help an explosive athlete, athlete or a repeat sprint athlete recover between plays, right? So if we have a soccer player who sprints real quickly and they use some of their anaerobic gas tanks. Between their next sprint, during their rest period, this aerobic system also has to help them recover by paying back or adding more gas into those gas tanks as well, right? So the aerobic system is really, really important. And I think a lot of coaches and strength coaches and um, skill coaches can miss out on that point where the aerobic system not only is just for helping us go for a long time, but it also needs to replenish and help us recover between sprints. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, month's video on energy systems and kind of just a basic understanding of the science behind them and how we apply them in the gym. All right, if you like the content in this video, uh, head on over to ifastuniversity.com for more videos like this. We have a great group of professionals that's growing rapidly and helping everybody involved to get better. Again, that's ifastuniversity.com and I hope to see you there.